Okay, what I'm now going to do is copy a file that I created earlier into this directory. Okay, let me clear the screen and do an ls. I've now got a file called fish.txt. Now, here's the hard thing. And this is the place where most people stumble when we're teaching this material to begin with. You need a text editor. You need to be able to edit plain text files, whether they're data files or program files. At some point, you need to be able to edit text. Microsoft Word is not a text editor, neither is OpenOffice. Everybody has their favorite. I use Emacs. I would like you not to use Emacs because it actually does cause damage to the hand after repeated exposure. There's a lot of places where you have to use control key reaches or escape key reaches, which means you're moving the small finger of your left hand like that. And if you do that for 30 years, you get the same sort of chronic pain that I've got here. We're going to use an editor called Nano. It is one of the simplest editors ever written. It's not something I would use for real. Talk to your instructors about what would be a good text editor on the computers that you're actually using. You may already have a favorite. Some people use VI, some people use TextMate. There are lots out there, but Nano is the simplest one around, and it comes on all three of the platforms that we care about. So once you say nanofish.txt, what happens is it launches the editor, and you can see this data file that we've created. It should have been handed out to you. Down at the bottom, there's two lines of commands. The circumflex means control. So control X is exit. Control O is write out. Control Y is previous page, and so forth. What we're going to do is use the arrow keys to move down and add a few more lines. 2012-08-31. We saw another Marlin. Actually, we saw a pair of Marlins. 2012 0831, we saw one more shark. Okay. So, this is a very common kind of data file. The first line is title, date, comma, species, comma, count. After that, we have a date in ISO format, year, dash, month, dash, day. Then we've got the name of some sort of seagoing creature. Uh, I know turtles aren't actually fish, but work with me here. And then we've got the count. How many of them did we see on that day? Okay, so this is the sort of observation that somebody in a high school class might bring back. Once we've done this, we use Control O to write the file and Control X to exit. LS, we've got fish.txt. Okay, how many lines are there in fish.txt? Well, one possibility would be to run nano again and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines. But if there's a thousand observations, that's going to be painful. There is a Unix command called WC. It stands for word count. If I ask WC fish.txt, it tells me how many lines, how many words, and how many characters. Now, you might think there's a lot more than 11 words in this file. But WC is very simple-minded. It only looks at spaces to find the breaks between words. It doesn't consider a comma a break. This all counts as one word because it's one unbroken sequence of non-blank characters. It's not the way you or I would see it, but that's what WC gives you. So you have to take these answers with a grain of salt. If I just want the number of lines, I can say WC, only show me lines, that's dash L, fish.txt. And it just tells me there are 10 lines. Excellent. Okay. What else could I do with this file? Well, suppose I just want the first few lines. Uh, if I've got a thousand records in the file, and I just want to take a look at the first few lines to see what's in there, I could say head, fish.txt. And that will show me the first 10 lines of the file. In this case, it's showing me all of the file because there are only 10 lines. But I could say head, just show me five lines. That's dash five, meaning show me five lines, not minus five, meaning show me negative five lines. Okay, head dash three of fish.txt, and so forth. Well, if there's a command called head, it makes sense that there would be a command called tail tail-3 of fish.txt shows me the last three lines 
tail-5 of fish.txt shows me the last five lines, and so forth. So I've now got a way to select the top or bottom of a file and get it out to the screen to inspect. I don't have to run the editor. This might seem like a small thing, but we're about to see one of the most powerful ideas in Unix, and it's an example of one of the most powerful ideas in programming. Let's have another look at that file. We could nano the file. Hmm, I don't want to have to keep going into the editor over and over again, so I'll use another command called cat. And what it does is just print the file to the screen. Cat is short for concatenate. If I say cat fish.txt fish.txt, it gives me two copies of the file. There's the first one, and then it echoes another copy of the file. This is why it's called concatenate. If you have a large, a large number of files and you want to put them all on the screen, you would cat file 1, file 2, file 3, and what you would get is their concatenated output. If you just give it one file, it just displays that one file. So, if I cat fish.txt, suppose I just want to select lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I just want to get those four lines onto the screen. How can I do it? Well, if there's a command called head that gets the top of the file and a command called tail that gets the bottom of the file, you might think that there'd be a command called middle or navel or spleen or something like that that would get the middle of the file. That's the sort of thing that passes for humor among programmers. But there isn't such a command because we don't need it. I'm going to say head Get me the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of the file and put it in a file called temp.txt. The greater than sign is called a redirect. What we're doing is telling Unix, instead of showing the output on the screen, take whatever you would have put to the screen and send it to a file, in this case a file called temp.txt, instead. So now when I do ls, you can see I've got my original fish.txt, but I've got a newer file, temp.txt. And if I wc temp.txt, sure enough, it's got eight lines, because I asked for eight lines when I said head-8. Okay, this is interesting. I've now got a way to run a command and save its output. If I now want to get the last four lines of temp.txt, I can say tail-4 of temp.txt. And sure enough, that's the lines I wanted. Because the last four lines of the first eight lines is lines 5, 6, 7, and 8. The head command got me lines 1 through 8, put them over here, and now I'm taking the last four of those. Well, the last four of the first eight must be 5, 6, 7, 8. So I don't need a separate command to get sections out of the middle of a file, I can do that by composing tools that I already have, by combining functions, head and tail, in the same way that I would in math. And this is probably the most powerful idea in programming. You build a bunch of pieces and then you build larger programs by combining those pieces. You don't always write the function that does exactly the job you want. You find the tools you've got and put them together in the same way that you would wire together components in a lab to get the piece of equipment that you need.